Firstly, that uh, the uh, threats uh, and legal harassment of uh, journalists and uh, free speech activists is mounting uh, alarmingly in the last few years. And you had uh, sedition cases being filed against journalists when we know that the established law is that sedition uh, law is only invoked in situations where there is an imminent threat of violence and there is no such threat of violence in any of these cases. Uh, we have had cases of, under the Official Secrets Act <coughs> when uh, this is the time of transparency and the Official Secrets Act obviously has no role in this new emerging regime of transparency. Uh, we have had cases of uh, for fomenting public disturbances, of, uh, of uh, dishonoring national symbols. In all these cases, in all these laws, the uh, jurisprudence is very poorly developed and where they exist, these are ignored. In the case of sedition, the, case, uh, the uh, law is very clear uh, as far back as 1961, that only in situations of imminent threat of violence and it's still being used repeatedly. So this is, a, is a partly a, the response of a threatened uh, ruling order to the new potentialities of, uh, of the new media because now, unlike in the past, there is more possibility for people who are otherwise outside the mainstream media discourse to come up and make their voices heard like uh, Kaun Bahapit, he did through his Facebook uh, posting. Now that, uh, that sentiment would not normally have been uh, allowed any room in the mainstream media, but he found a way to make that uh, opinion heard, and this threatens the established order, and they will retaliate in ways using the coercive power of the law, not with the intent of enforcing the law or with enforcing punishment, but to silence through the threat of uh, of legal action, just to obtain an injunction through the threat of uh, legal action. And normal people are, are unwilling to run this whole gauntlet of the legal process and they will keep quiet rather than risk getting into further trouble. So this is a pattern of behavior that we've seen over the years. And what we should also note is that the law is used invariably to threaten people who speak up in a critical sense, people who, uh, who challenge uh, the quiet complacence of uh, an oppressive order, people who speak up in defense of oppression, get away with it. You've had uh, cases in the recent past, communal violence being orchestrated through <laughs> newspapers, through front page editorials in newspapers. And these have escaped any manner of sanction all these years. Now, we should also all, all stand up here in solidarity with uh, Kamal Bhattiji. And also we should remember recent such cases where uh, uh, activists and writers and cultural uh, practitioners have been threatened with extreme legal sanctions for merely being courageous enough to stand up and speak up against an oppressive order. And let me speak, let me refer to the case of Sudhir Dawle in Bombay, let me refer to the case of Sheetal Sate. These are artists of the spoken and written word. They've never touched firearms in their lives, but today they're facing charges on on uh, under the law dealing with uh, waging war against the state and such like the most draconian laws which could involve punishment extending up to uh, life imprisonment. So it's a good occasion and it's wonderful that we've all come together here but let's remember that this threat might be overcome but there's, there's still a lurking danger that uh, faces many more activists in this country. Thank you so much.